hummingbirds. They're awesome. And I didn't really expect to see as many as I have so far. Uh, I knew from friends who have moved here previously that they would be here in the area because they see them every summer and they have feeders out for them. I did not expect quite as many as I saw, and I certainly didn't think about how quickly they would migrate to me putting out a feeder, which was instantly. There were already people who have, like, out in the, the community and the surrounding areas, there are other people with hummingbird feeders out, and that makes sense because I haven't seen a whole lot of flowers in the area. Now, I haven't done a whole lot of exploring yet, I'm still new here and we've had a lot of other things taking up time, like spending a day going to the DMV to get driver's licenses because, of course, we have to go to two different locations for the cars and then the license. Anyway, it's taken up a lot of my free time, so I haven't had too much time to explore just yet. But of the exploring that I've done in the driving around and whatnot, I haven't seen flowers, almost at all. Not huge patches of them here or there, maybe, but hummingbirds drink the nectar from flowers, right? That's my understanding of it. There's a lot of hummingbirds here. <laughs> We put up the feeder and almost immediately had birds coming to it. Like, not a joke immediately. Put up the hummingbird feeders, and before walking away, there are hummingbirds coming and checking out and being like, oh, yes, okay, sugar water? I'm all about it. Cool. Obviously, that's great. I get to hear them. I get to listen to them. I did not know the sounds that they made because I've never been up and close personal with hummingbirds before. They are very chill around humans. <laughs> they are very used to the humans in this community because there's a larger amount of people here and they just don't mind. Uh, while I was out there, I, I got all the cameras up and I, I went out early on in the morning and I set the cameras up so I could watch the hummingbird feeders for a while and try to get as much footage as I can. And they didn't mind that I was out there. They didn't mind I was five or six away feet, you know, five or six feet away from the hummingbird feeders. It was all kind of on our contained porch. One of them even came up and went, what, what's this guy doing? What's here? And just kind of flew around me and did like a, a, a sort of like hovering over near me and maybe a foot away and then over and then a little closer and then just kind of went all the way around. I heard him buzzing all the way around and then went back to the feeder. Not bothered in the slightest. They were, I was out there for two or three hours and there was just nonstop hummingbirds the whole time, which was great. I got a lot of good footage, I think. Um, I've pieced it all together. I've been editing for maybe four hours. <laughs> it takes a while. It is a long process. And even checking the books here, can't really nail down exactly what kinds, except I think I have more than one visiting, which I don't, I don't even know how rare that is within itself. I don't know, they're, they're definitely territorial, especially the males. There's a lot of chasing other birds away from the feeder, other hummingbirds away from the feeder so that the male can drink the nectar. I don't know if that also happens with other males of other types of hummingbirds. The problem is that I kind of narrowed it down to a few different ones. It, it seemed to be, obviously I go for the most common first because I don't think I'm lucky enough, I guess, to see anything rare, especially on the first outing or anything. But looking at that, it's possible the ruby-throated hummingbird because that's very common and they do have red on their, the males have red on their um, throats, ruby-throated. But that they aren't usually this far west. Looking at the, the both of the books that I have, they don't come all the way this far into Colorado, which is interesting. Then the western version of it would probably be the black chinned, right? Black chinned. More common for this area, they say kind of the Western equivalent for the ruby throated is the black chin hummingbird, which is also possible, but their, their throat isn't really as purple as I see on the uh, illustrations. It doesn't match quite exactly, so I'm not entirely sure there. And there's, there's very minute details trying to identify the different ones that are there. And of course there are hybrids between them, which makes it even harder to try and nail down exactly what we've got there. And then even just towards the end of editing, as I was processing, I was rendering out the final cut of the video that I was working on, I realized there was another one that flew up at one point that I missed entirely. Its tail was all spread out. That's the broad-tailed hummingbird. So maybe I have multiple hummingbirds that all come to this one location, that all come into this area during the summer. I mean, it's possible. There, there's definitely plenty of like water and things like that. 
like I said, I haven't seen too much flowers or things that I know that they will eat, but maybe there's just enough people who put out hummingbird feeders that it is able to sustain their whole population before they fly south for the winter. I'm not entirely sure. I'm new at this, and I've not been up close with hummingbirds that often, so this is really the first experience. I've seen one here or there in a couple different places. Uh, previously, I saw one at a botanical garden where there was tons of flowers, so that kind of makes sense. And then I saw one very briefly in an area that was a big open space with, again, lots of flowers. So I don't know if that's possible that they just keep coming back here every year because they know there are enough people who feed them. That's interesting. Um, it's possible. I guess I'll find out if I find more flowers, I guess is really the only way. Anyway, it was really cool to see. It was really cool to experience and be out there and be so very close to them and <laughs> to have the footage from a couple different angles for the cameras that I set up. I did the audio as well so I could try to capture it. And of course I experienced a little bit of trouble with my recording and the fact that I used all of my devices to sync the time codes between them and it just didn't work and I didn't notice until I got down and sat down to edit. So the audio is, not quite what I was hoping for in that regard. I was hoping to take the higher quality ones, but it is what it is. I still got some great stuff. I'm really happy that I was able to do that. I, I'm going to continue to research and try a couple different books that I have that I don't usually all dive. If I usually the two books that I have are enough for me to correctly identify or at least make the best guess that I can, but I've got a couple more. They're just packed up right now. So I got to go dig through and find those, which will take a little bit more time, but Thankfully, before I, I hope before this actually goes live in like a month to have identified which ones they are before it goes on YouTube. Patreon gets an early look, it's the benefit of Patreon. You also get more of a raw, I don't know, maybe. Maybe the people on Patreon will be able to help me out in identifying the birds. We'll find out. But it gives me more time to dig into it and do some research. Hopefully find out exactly what they are. Maybe by the time you're seeing this, I've identified them. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just label the video hummingbirds at the bird feeder. Or at the feeder. At the sugar water. How do I put a meme of the, the guy from Men in Black who got taken over by an alien and he just says sugar water? How do I put that as a title? I don't think we can put GIFs as titles on the internet yet. So, in conclusion, hummingbirds, really cool to see such tiny little things have so much personality and how they move and interact with each other, chasing each other around the feeder. Sometimes you'll get multiple all sitting and drinking at the same time. It's fascinating how they survive off of sugar water and just how fast they are. Shooting it at a higher frame rate with the uh, pocket cinema camera, I did not bring out the big one because it was, it would have drawn a bit of attention and kind of telegraph just how expensive all of my equipment is, unfortunately, to people who also know where I live because I'm on my front porch. So I didn't do that to get the highest possible frame rate. I may do that in the future. I'm still kind of thinking about it. I have a little bit of time in the morning before anyone really wakes up. But the point is, I still did the best that I could with what I had, and uh, I still got some cool footage. It's slower. It's not really slow motion enough. It shoots basically double 120 frames per second that I play back at 60 because that's everything I do is 4k 60. It's really cool to see and even then they're moving so incredibly fast. It's fascinating to watch. Very cool. And watching them drink their little little tongues coming out. Cute. Cute birds. Really cool to see. Really glad that I was able to do it. And it's just a fantastic thing that I don't think I would have had this opportunity to do until I moved to a place where hummingbirds are just so popular. 